hello everyone um welcome to the second last video of number patterns so the video in the i'm a question for my number pattern from uh paper one around november 2013 um so this is always a question two no question three okay so looking at question three question two sorry but he given the geometric sequence 7x63 determine the possible values of x right so <clears throat> we are given a sequence we are told that it's geometric so by now says with a geometric sequence it uh see good geometric sequence is in a common ratio and then to solve the unknown term so seven this are a common ratio right so now let me copy this to our board um okay just this first part okay so we want to solve for x from that sequence right so we are told what it is is a geometric sequence therefore it means term 2 divided by term 1 is equals to term 3 divided by term 2 right and then term 2 it's x term 1 is 7 term 3 is 63 and then term 2 is x again right so to solve for x now we cross multiply so the x times x 7 times 63 so this is one of x squared is equals to 410 41 and then when you take square roots both sides, you'll have x is equals to plus or minus the square root of 141, which is equals to plus of minus 21. So x is equals to plus of minus 21. And easy three marks there. <clears throat> um, by now, everyone should be able to get this this one. Okay? Um, it is straightforward right so let's move on to 2.2 right <clears throat> sorry um let's copy Okay, but the first term of a geometric sequence is 15. The second term is 10. Calculate T10. Okay, so we are told T1 is equals to 15. T2 is equals to 10. Right? And then we they want us to calculate term number 10. So 2.2.1, they tell us T1 is 15. T2 is 10, right? So <clears throat> we are told what this is a geometric sequence. Therefore, we know what we are working with this formula here, right? Where A is the first term, we are told what A, the first term is 15. Therefore, A is equals to 15. Ne? And then the common ratio we can calculate as term number 2 divided by term number 1, that is 10 over. 15 which is 2 over 3 so the formula for tn is equals to 15 times 2 over 3 to the power n minus 1 now we have a formula for tn therefore we we can calculate t10 t10 we just substitute 10 where we see n in our general formula right <clears throat> So this is a total T10 is equals to when you punch this in your calculator, the total T10 is equals to 2560 divided by 6561. Right? <clears throat> um Zoe Zoe Gala so you can write it in decimal form and round off to two decimal places. But then so 
2.2.2.2.2 but he calculate s9 so because we have a geometric sequence we are using this formula um a is equals to sorry sn is equals to a times 1 minus rn divided by 1 minus r right so if we now s9 therefore we substitute 9 where we see n we know a is equals to 15 and then the common ratio is 2 over 3 to the power 9 right so <clears throat> s9 is equals to 43.83 totally five marks yako so say 2.3 okay Right, so 2.3 but given the sequence 0, minus 1 over 2, 0, 1 over 2, 0, 3 over 2, and so on, assume that the pattern continues consistently. So a pattern the equivalent the way it does. <clears throat> and then but it write down the value of the nine the hundred and ninety-first term of this sequence okay so 2.3.1 2.3.1 they want t 191 right so notice we go from our sequence kuma odd positions we have zero right um so kuma odd positions we have zero right 191 is an odd position therefore we'll have zero again right <clears throat> then 2.3.2 but it determine the sum of the first 500 terms of this sequence so <clears throat> from this original sequence they want us to calculate the the sum of the 500 terms right so they want us to calculate the sum up until t 500 when you add all these terms they want s 500 right <clears throat> so to get s 500 notice we would 500 is an is an even number so we 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 have something there and then go 499 we have zero right but then at the end of the day when you add zero plus zero plus zero you still get zero so it means that out of these 500 tens only half have values other than zero right so 250 250 tens they they have the value of zero and the other 250 they have actual values so let us take the the terms which are not equals to zero so we have one over two minus one over two we have one over two we have three over two we have five over two and so on right so now notice we need to move from 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 to 1 over 2 we added half to move from uh to move from minus 1 over 2 to 1 over 2 we added half to move from 1 over 2 to 3 over 2 we added half again and from 3 over 2 to 5 over 2 we also added half so the terms which are not zero they form an arithmetic sequence with the uh, sorry to move from uh 
to move from minus 1 over 2 to 1 over 2 we added 1 not half to move from minus 1 over 2 to 1 over 2 we added 1 to move from 1 over 2 to 3 over 2 we added 1 and then 3 over 2 to 5 over 2 we added 1 again so the terms that are not equals to 0 they form an arithmetic sequence with the first term being minus 1 over 2 the second term being that one and then the common difference being 1 so we have a equals to minus 1 over 2 and the common difference being 1 right they want the sum of the first 500 terms right of this sequence they get the half of these terms out of the 500 they are they are equals to zero half of this term half of the terms out of the whole 500 they have the value zero because the sequence con continues in the same way right so it means when we are summing the actual values that we are summing they are 250 because when you add when you say zero plus zero plus zero plus zero and so on you, you end up getting uh, zero so if we want to calculate s500 we'll have we're using this formula because we have an arithmetic sequence that we are summing um n over 2 to a plus n minus 1 t right so so if you are summing 250 terms so instead of substituting 500 there i will substitute 250 because the other 250 terms are just zero and then when you say zero plus zero plus zero you, you get zero right so now we just substitute uh the first term is minus one over two 250 minus one the common difference is one right so now punching these two our calculator we get 31,000 okay that's 2.3 <clears throat> okay that's 2.3.2 and then now let us look at 2.4 so 2.4 we are given this sigma notation and then the first question but calculate the first term of this series if x is equals to 1 right so if x is equals to 1 then term number 1 will be so <clears throat> okay so if you have a, a series ne? a series is when we are adding the terms t1 plus t2 plus t3 right and then writing this in terms of sn this is s3 right so <clears throat> this is s3 right because we are summing the first three terms so notice we would be s2 will be the first term plus the second term and then s1 will just be the first term so if i have s1 sorry if i have this sigma notation right and then we are summing the terms of the sequence the terms of the series rather <clears throat> we are summing the terms of the, the series if i know the first term then i know s1 right um i hope that makes sense um so to calculate t1 to calculate t1 if x is 1 you will say t1 is equals to from that uh, equation there 
from that from that sigma notation t1 will be 4 when x is 1 4 times 1 minus 1 to the power 2 which is equals to 3 to the power 2 which is 9 so that's that's the first question 2.4.1 2.4.2 but if for which values of x will this exist so we are summing to infinity here so for which values of x will the sum to infinity exist so let us write that sum to infinity so this is summing from k equals to 1 to infinity sorry summing from k equals to 1 to infinity of this expression here we are just saying 4 when k when k is equals to 1 so 1 of 4x minus 1 to the power 1 plus now k is equal to 4x minus 1 to the power 2 plus now k is equal to 3 4x minus 1 to the power 3 and so on up to infinity right so now notice what this is a geometric series because to move from this first term to this one we multiplied by 4x minus 1 that's why we have 4x minus 1 all squared right so now it means our common ratio is 4x minus 1 so this is a geometric series yeah? so now in order for the sum to infinity of a geometric series to exist r must be between minus 1 and 1 our common ratio must be between minus 1 and 1 for the sum to infinity to exist right so which values of x will this sum to infinity exist we know what the sum to infinity will exist if r is between minus 1 and 1 but then what is r r is 4x minus 1 so when you substitute 4x minus 1 here 4x minus 1 um you will see what the okay solving for x take minus one to that side is over is over no one plus one which is two that side is over no minus one plus one which is zero now x has to be between one over two now we're dividing by four both on both sides of the inequalities so x will be between zero and one over two so the sum to infinity will exist for the values of x that are between 0 and 1, 1 over 2. Okay, so now we are moving on to question 3, right? So question 3, 3.1, says it already. This was uh, some question with activity 4, right? Go back to activity 4 one with this is solving journey these questions right <clears throat> okay so this is 3.2 but consider the following pattern of pattern of dots right we have figure one figure two figure three and figure four but if tn represents the total number of dots in figure n then the number of dots then t1 is equals to one t2 is equals to five so t1 they calculated the number of dots in the first figure there's one dot so t1 is equals to one in the second figure there are how many dots there's 
one two three four five there's five dots therefore uh, t2 is equals to five they want us to calculate term number five so go figure three let us cal count the number of dots we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so term number three should be twelve right <clears throat> and then term number four should be counting the number of dots with figure four so you know one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So term number three should be 20. Term number four, sorry. Term number four should be 22. So now we want term number five. Okay. So now 3.2.1. Term number, term number one is one. Term number one is one. Term number one is one. Term number two is five. Term number three is twelve. And term number four is twenty-two. Right? Now getting the difference from this to move from one to five, they added four. To move from four to five to twelve, they added seven. To move from 12 to 22 we added 10 right and then um, and then now we have this first difference right and then now what is the second difference from 4 to 3 you add 3 from from 4 to 7 you have to add 3 from 7 to 10 you have to add 3 right then this is a quadratic sequence so now to get term number five so this is term number one term number two term number three term number four to get term number five you have to add one term number five ne? to get if you add three to to 10 you will get 13 so the next term here is 13 right and then if you add 22 and 13 you will get <clears throat> 22 and 13 you will get that term number 5 is 35 therefore t5 is equals to 35 okay so now we have t5 um Okay, let me erase this. Okay, so we have term number five to be thirty five. Right, term number three, see term number three is term number three is twelve. Term number four, term number four, so that is twenty-two. Term number five is thirty-five. Now they want us to calculate term number fifth. So, from three point, from three point two point one, um, we had we had the we we had that the second we, we saw that the second difference is equals to to three ne? so i'll just write that again that is four seven ten three three so this is a quadratic sequence our second difference is three see if the second difference is three it means that two a is equals to Three. therefore a is equals to 3 over 2 right because we are dealing with a cathodic sequence we know the formula for the general term is tn is equals to an squared plus bn plus c right so a 
is equals to 3 over 2 right to get b you will see that 3a plus b is equals to 4 right the first term of the first difference now we have a already a is 3 over 2 so if you substitute a in this equation you'll get that b you'll get that b is equals to 4 minus 3a but then we have the value of a already is 3 over 2 so if you substitute this in your calculator you'll get that b is equals to minus 1 over 2 b is equals to minus 1 over 2 right and then now to get the success short angle c to get c you will say a plus uh, b plus c is equals to 1 right so c is equals to 1 minus a minus b but then we have a as 3 over 2 and we have b as minus 1 over 2 so if you substitute this in your calculator you'll get that c is equals to c is equals to is equals to zero okay? and then therefore our formula is t n is equals to 3 over 2 n squared minus 1 over 2 n now we want term number 50 so substituting 50 where you see n in that formula will have t50 to be to 3725 right so <clears throat> yeah the oh that was the last question okay so yeah that's it for this video um it's the second last one and then uh we'll do one more Last service discuss a corner it passed paper again for uh, a selector my question on my number patterns. Yeah.